In this video, we're talking briefly about the difference between absolute pressure and gauge pressure and messing around with some simple calculations. And then we'll talk about when do you use absolute pressure versus when do you use gauge pressure. So I want to start with this little reminder. So we live under a whole lot of air that sits on top of us. And the weight of that air causes a pressure. And we call that atmospheric pressure. Sometimes we call it one atmosphere of pressure. That's an actual unit. Sometimes we write it in pascals and write it as 101.3 kilopascals. Sometimes we write it in pounds per square inch and write it as 14.7 PSI. So what's absolute pressure? That's when we measure a pressure and we include the atmospheric pressure number in that. So by telling you atmospheric pressure is 101.3 kilopascals, I'm implicitly measuring absolute pressure. So what's gauge pressure? That's the pressure relative to the atmospheric pressure. So like if I look at the pressure in a tire and it's 30 PSI, it means 30 PSI higher than the atmospheric pressure around it. So I like to do a really quick example to illustrate the difference. And the example is this. Can you tell me what the pressure is in a flat tire? And of course, now I'm wondering, what kind of pressure do you want? Do you want gauge pressure or absolute pressure? Well, in a flat tire, definitely. The gauge pressure is going to be zero. When you hook up a pressure gauge, it says zero. What about the absolute pressure? Well, if it's a flat tire, like it just has a big hole poked in it, it's exposed to the atmosphere. So that's going to be one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals. Or I could say PATM for atmospheric pressure. All right, so this helps me to get a handle on how to write a little formula to relate these two things. The absolute pressure is simply the gauge pressure plus atmospheric pressure. OK, so what about the question of like why do we use two different types of pressure? And the answer is that if you're dealing with like ordinary hydrostatics, hydrodynamics types of calculations, we're almost always talking about gauge pressure. We're talking about things we would actually measure with a pressure gauge. But if you start talking about like the behavior of ideal gases and writing down mathematical rules for that stuff, then you would need to use the absolute pressure. All of those formulas are derived in that context. So typically, as we move through this hydrostatics, hydrodynamic stuff, we're going to be talking about gauge pressure. But occasionally, we'll see something about absolute pressure. So how about one more quick example? OK, so we're told that the typical bursting pressure for a 2-liter bottle is about 150 PSI. Find the absolute burst pressure in PSI and Pascals. So certainly, you would expect a manufacturer, if they're going to state the bursting pressure for a bottle, they're going to assume that you're on the surface of the Earth and that you're not in some kind of vacuum chamber. So that's gauge pressure, 150 PSI bigger than atmospheric pressure. So I can say my bursting pressure is going to be 150 PSI gauge pressure. pressure. So we're writing in, in absolute form now, plus atmospheric pressure, which is 14.7 PSI. And that gives me 164.7 PSI. I then need to do a unit conversion to get this value in Pascals. So that's something you look up, or maybe you remember it. So it turns out a PSI is 6,895 Pascals. And when I do that calculation, I get that the bursting pressure is 1.14 times 10 to the 6 Pascal's absolute pressure. And we've confirmed yet again that Pascal's are a very tiny unit of pressure. 